You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's great to have you here with me today on this Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday podcast, where we are going to be going through 20 ways to help you increase energy in both your body and mind. Why is that so important to me? I want to be able to help you live your best life. And I know that you are not going to be able to do that if you're feeling the symptoms of what's called HPA axis dysfunction. That means your body is not able to make energy in a normal way. And over time, our body becomes zapped of life. And that lower energy, that lower vitality shows up as anxiety. And fatigue, sometimes just in the morning, and and then you have more energy later in the day, which is actually dysfunctional. It's upside down. We get more irritability. We get fluctuations in blood sugar. We get sick more often. I've explained that before with that neuroendoimmunological function of the body. The immune system actually needs energy. You start to get sick. You have difficulty sleeping at night. And I talked about that as you might be tired all morning and then you can't sleep at night. You start to gain weight easier. You have what we call a poor tolerance to exercise. You're sore more often after you work out. Your emotions don't feel balanced, sometimes lower mood, sometimes just more emotional, more irritable, sometimes feeling like you need to cry. You cry more often and you don't even know why. Oftentimes we crave salt, right? All of these things are, are signs that our body doesn't have the energy that it needs. Well, luckily now we can actually figure out where someone is in terms of their adrenal-based issues, and we call it adrenal-based issues because that's what it's commonly known as, adrenal fatigue or adrenal-based issues, but it starts in which the way that the brain communicates with those adrenals, with the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland in the brain. And I've done many, many shows, and I do hope you tune back to those, on the different stages of adrenal-based issues or adrenal fatigue. So do check those out. Today, what I want to do is this. I want to help you identify what stage you might be at. But really, what I'd like to do is give you some real world things that you can begin to do in terms of overall lifestyle, part of the de-stress protocol that we talk about, to ramp up your energy and to bring you back a little bit more life. Now, these things don't happen overnight, but they do happen with consistency, which is what it's all about. And one of the reasons why this is so important, and why I'm doing it on this Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday show, is that A lot of people know they should exercise, but they don't have the energy. A lot of people know that they should get that body moving 10,000 steps per day, regardless of actual exercise. But again, not a lot of energy to do so. So if you're trying to deal with weight loss issues, and you know one of the best ways to maintain weight loss is to stay physically active, and you have no energy, I can understand why you might say, well, I really need some energy before I start to exercise. Now, part of it is, as you start to exercise, you actually increase energy. Let's use that as our first one, right? Let's dive right into it. So the first way that we can actually begin to increase energy is to slowly, very slowly, increase our stamina. One of the hermetic stressors, again, I've talked about this on a previous podcast as well. That show, if I can find it for you, I will link that up. But it was on a training Thursday, I believe, and it was about hermetic-based stressors. And that is episode 1182, I believe. So check that out if you want to learn more about that. So our goal is to graduate people from one form of exercise to another. And the first one is simply walking. So let's start there with walking. We need to get you 
up to 10,000 steps per day. And the reason we need to do this is simply because it's also one of the best things that you can do to live a longer, healthier life, to cut down on diabetes, to cut down on stroke, cardiovascular issues like heart attack, and even cancer. So we just named the top three killers of people in the world. And if we can cut down on those by simply getting up to 10,000 steps per day, we can do that. That's a great first place to start. The second one is this. If walking is so vitally important, so is an anti-inflammatory diet. I want you to focus on seven to nine servings every single day of fruit and vegetables. Now, if you're someone looking to lose weight, maybe we won't do seven servings of fruit per day, but we will do seven servings of vegetables. And we'll do two cups of berries per day. We can use those whenever we'd like throughout the day. And again, a lot of shows on that on how to time those meals. So what I'm looking for you to do is at the end of the day, forget about the servings. Did you get seven to nine cups of fruit and vegetables every day? Let's use that. Easy. You will just use a cup. So we'll use an average. And that means if you eat three meals per day, did you get approximately two to three cups at each meal? You can do that. That's why a smoothie is so easy in the morning. Cup of greens, cup of blueberries, there's two. At lunch, you do three cups of vegetables. Again, it could be maybe it's two cups of salad and then another cup of veggies on top. Okay, good. And then for dinner, let's just say, well, maybe let's say you were hungry before dinner and you had a half a cup or so of raspberries. And then half hour later, hour later for dinner, you sit down, that little bit of berries maybe uh, satiated that sweet tooth, and then... Let's say that you had a cup of broccoli and a cup of cauliflower. Easy way to get seven servings right there. Now, again, as you move to the next level, you can do three cups at lunch. Or that was actually more than seven. And you can do three cups at dinner. You can do three at breakfast. It's actually very easy to get those seven to nine servings. And if you do that and you do nothing else, you've turned your diet most likely into an anti-inflammatory one. Even if you're eating other inflammatory foods. By adding that many anti-inflammatories, you're setting yourself up for balance to achieve equilibrium. Okay, one of my other favorites that I want you to do is this. We talk about this in the morning. Super simple to do. Easy way to move circulation of the body. If we move circulation of the body, we get blood flow going, we start to remove waste, and that is, I'm going to give you a couple, dry brushing. If you haven't heard of dry brushing, I want you to go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. Every topic I talk about today will have a previous podcast that's about 20 minutes of more in-depth. Type in lymphatic. So L-Y-M-P-H-A-T-I-C, lymphatic, or just type in lymph, and you'll find the podcast on moving the lymph. You'll find out about using this next thing that I'm talking about, which is the dry brush. A dry brush. It might take you a whole one to two minutes before you get in the shower in the morning, right? All you have to do even if you're not an expert on dry brushing, and I talk about this in the rain barrel effect, is simply move from the wrist to the armpits, stroking with the dry brush, and your ankles up towards the groin. And you've just moved the lymphatic system, and you don't need a lot of pressure. You press down no more than one to three millimeters. That's it. Very light, gentle pressure. It will not only get the lymph moving, which will help for detoxification, but it will wake up that circulation. Really great. Another one is using a rebounder. So just jumping up and down on a rebounder, also known as a trampoline, will help you to move that lymphatic system as well. How long? 90 seconds, couple minutes, that's it. You can even bounce for 30 seconds, take 30 off, and do that three to five times. Now you also have a nice little metabolic interval first thing in the morning. It's a great way to do it. All right, what else do I like you to do in the morning that's super helpful in terms of energy? Water. Remember, Let's say you go to bed at 10 o'clock at night. You're right on target. You're doing great. Okay, well, let's look at it. Maybe you stopped drinking water around 8 o'clock because you didn't want to have to urinate while you were in bed, right? Not actually in bed, but, you know, getting up to use the restroom. All right, so let's look at it this way. If you don't have water then until the next morning around 8 o'clock, because let's say you slept till 6 to 7 o'clock or so, got your body moving, you didn't drink anything yet you'll have gone a half a day without any fluid, without any water. A lot of times when we feel zapped of energy, 
we're actually just very dehydrated. So let's keep that in mind to wake up right away and hydrate the body. I like to put in a scoop of the daily fruit and vegetable blend, and I like to put in a pinch of sea salt, and I like to do a lot of lime, squeeze some lime right in there. Great way to hydrate the body. How much? Well, if you're not used to drinking any water, start at 8 ounces, then work your way up to 12, and then 16 ounces, a couple glasses of water to start the day. You'll be amazed at how much less caffeine you will need, which brings me on to my next one, which is caffeine. Whatever you're drinking right now for caffeine, try to use my caffeine weaning method. Check out the previous podcast on that. Go down by 25% or so per week, but you don't have to go down in size. You can use a water-based, a Swiss water process decaf, or you can start to use more herbal-based coffee substitutes. Check out my previous podcast on that. Decrease your stress, which means decrease your caffeine input. By taking in caffeine, you're revving up the engine. You're increasing adrenaline, norepinephrine. And if we do that, well, we use more stress hormone and it can begin to tire us out. So another great one right there. One of my favorites, especially if you have a backyard or you know you take your dog out for a walk or so and you're in a, a beautiful area, like when I go to Maine in the summer, I walk outside barefoot first thing in the morning. In Maine, it's right near the ocean. There's a lot of dew on the grass. Very powerful way to ground yourself and increase negative ions. Negative ions are an amazing way that have been clinically proven to disperse agglutinated red blood cells. That basically means this. When all your red blood cells are clumped together, we don't get as much oxygen in. We don't get as much waste out. We have poorer circulation. By doing some grounding, by walking near the water's edge, by walking outside barefoot, especially first thing in the morning, it's a great way to ground yourself. Walking in the woods, the trails, all those different types of things, even if you're not barefoot, will increase your negative ion input, which will hopefully increase your energy. Really, really powerful. Another thing that we like to have going on in my house as well is an essential oil diffuser. If you've never heard about this before, remember, you can type in any one of these keywords, such as grounding or earthing, it's called, or diffuser. Just type in D-I-F-F-U-S-E-R or O-R, I believe. And um, it's called an essential oil diffuser. You can put in your favorite essential oil, ideally organic, scents. And you can keep them in a bedroom, in living room, and you can actually use different scents depending on the time of the day. Well, one of the ones that I like to use pretty much no matter what time of the day is lavender. Lavender is a great one. It will help with energy by keeping you more balanced because it helps to calm your sympathetic nervous system which help you to shift over to the parasympathetic nervous system. So really, really great. But at night, again, you, you might want to use a lavender. You might want to use even a lip, eucalyptus if the sinuses are a little congested. You might want to use a more of like an orange during the day to spark a little bit uh, more energy. But it's a great way to calm the body and the mind, which includes the nervous system, which is the connector between body and mind. Really great one. Check that out. Uh, That's a fun one as well, uh, for sure. Okay. A couple others that I like to use myself because I want to take them from from everyday life. Binaural beats. Binaural beats are absolutely amazing. Again, check those out on the podcast, B-I-N-A-U-R-A-L, binaural beats. And what these do is it helps to entrain brave waves. So what it does is it gets you into more of that meditation state. My favorite time to use them, like when I use them in my... Again, you can use them anytime. But how I use them in my life, I do my walking meditation during lunch. And then at night before bed, put on some binaural beats. Just as I'm getting ready for bed. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And it will bring your body into more of a relaxed state, which will help you fall asleep faster, which will bring me to my next point, enabling you to get back into a sleep cycle. Almost nothing helped my energy more when I had Addison's disease and then getting back into a normal diurnal rhythm, going to bed between 9.30 and 10 at night and waking up, well, when my body allowed, when it it was um, done sleeping in the morning. But now I get up around 5.30 a.m. If you do that every day, every day, same time to bed, same time to wake up, 
Try to do it within a half hour maximum. Do that every day for 21 days. I'm telling you, that alone is a game changer. That alone tells your body when to produce energy and when to go to bed at night. That is what ultimately helped to fix my sleep-based issues. Now, did I use things to help me fall asleep? Absolutely. Back you know, in the day when I was being medicated, I was using Ambien and Lunesta and Benadryl and NyQuil and everything under the sun to get me to sleep because I was a complete insomniac. Now, got into natural medicine, didn't use those things anymore, of course, and they are now what I use if I need them, and it's part of the deep sleep protocol, and it's magnesium. And it's liquid melatonin, which is non-groggy because I used a lot of melatonin and it made me super groggy. This type doesn't. And then I used natural herbals as well in the deep sleep support. So that's the deep sleep protocol and will get you to bed faster and stay asleep. And then you wake up no matter what at the same time every day to get yourself into a sleep cycle. So big fan of that. Obviously, uh, that is one of those crucial lifestyle things that I can't recommend enough. Another one that will help you get in that state, blue blockers. Blue blockers, if you're watching TV at night, if you're using your phone at night, put it on you know, nighttime mode. But the other big thing is this. If you have lights on the house, if your partner's not really you know, into the whole natural health thing, you can simply wear blue blockers. Blue blocking sunglasses or blue blocking glasses. Super easy to do. Again, all these things are very searchable on my podcast page. All right. Well, which one do I want to give you next? This is one I've been talking about quite a bit. I just talked about this this Sunday in my email newsletter. If you don't subscribe to that, you're welcome to. I just send out my one email a week, and that's on Sundays. And it's it's kind of like whatever I'm thinking at the time. It's my Sunday musings. I give that to you along with a Sunday rewind, which is a recap of the previous week of things that you might have missed. So the one thing that I've been talking about is EMF and just being connected which in my opinion is is causing more disconnectedness. There's one thing I always, you know, my wife and I try to do at night is when we're sitting down together is just get rid of the phones. We could be seated right beside each other but looking down on our phone the whole time. And we're connected online. Maybe we're even like DMing each other things from Instagram posts that we saw, but we're not actually having a conversation then. So it's our goal to be more connected by disconnecting from our devices. The other pro to that is that there is less than light shining in your eyes, which is telling your body it's still daytime or flashing from videos. Really important to look at that. So they've also shown that EMFs and EMF-based radiation uh, can absolutely affect your sleep. So I'm a huge, huge uh, proponent of doing that. All right, another thing that will help you sleep tremendously. Stop eating two to three hours before bed. Two to three hours before bed, no more food. No more snacking, no more food. Allow your energy to be used for digestion two to three hours before. And then by the time you get to bed, the majority of the energy that your body's ramped up for for digestion has started to cool and calm down. That will then enable you to be in a more relaxed state. If your body has to digest a ton of food, that is not going to help you to relax and get into a deep rejuvenating state asleep. The other part of that is alcohol. I talked about this last week. I actually talked about it yesterday. If you want to live a long, healthy life with lots of energy to do everything that you want, we have to cut back on alcohol. It is not a health food, nor has it ever been a health food. It is a toxin that literally starts to replace oxygen in your blood with alcohol. We can't have that at any level. Am I not saying to never drink? I'm not saying that. Every once in a while, you can drink. Maybe choose one night a week to have a couple drinks. Not 12, but maybe two. Once a week. Enjoy them. But more importantly than the alcohol, enjoy the company that you're having the alcohol with. That's it. So if you drink alcohol, there's no doubt you will slowly, over time, have a lot less energy. In Ayurveda, in traditional Chinese medicine, in any type of medicine that you can imagine. Again, Taoist medicine. There was no alcohol. If you did alcohol, it was infused with certain herbs. That's an Ayurvedic thing. But also the alcohol, they knew over time weakened life force, less energy, dampened nervous system response. We know that, right? Just from drunk driving, slower response. We don't want that. You may fall asleep faster with alcohol, but it will not be a deep, restful, rejuvenating sleep. You most likely won't get into those deeper levels of REM, And you'll wake up more often during the middle of the night. 
not good. Not good at all. Another one along the food line is just getting rid of the top food sensitivities. If you haven't run a food sensitivity test, I can't recommend that enough. I recommend, of course, the thyroid adrenal hormone test or the adrenal hormone to actually see what your cortisol levels are like and see what your energy levels are like. If you want to know why you're not functioning at optimal energy, I can't recommend enough either the starter kit, which is the organic acids test, and the hair tissue mineral analysis shows you all your vitamins and then all your minerals, gut function overall. But you could also run, if you can run all three, great. What's going on with your adrenal glands or the HPA axis and the output of cortisol? Same with thyroid. That's called the thyroid adrenal hormone. If you're having any difficulty losing weight, I can't recommend that test enough as well. Really, really great test. Now, the food sensitivity test, though, that's all part of the big five. The big five will give you all of these plus omega-3s, which we'll definitely get into in, in a moment. But here's the thing. If you eat a food at dinner and you're sensitive to it, it could cause bloating, digestive-based issues, which affect sleep. When your sleep is affected, it's going to affect your energy. Plus, it takes so much energy to decrease and squelch this inflammatory response from foods that you're sensitive to. Now, it might be the typical ones like cow's milk or gluten, but there's other ones that people don't know about that they don't know they're sensitive to, such as egg whites or even avocado we see sometimes pop up. That's why it's important to run a food sensitivity test as well. All right, let me do a little bit about the omega-3s right now, just because the more omega-3s you get in, and this would include from fish or from algae or from walnuts, flax, chia, et cetera. The more omega-3s that you get in, the more you're going to be balanced in type, terms of mood and inflammation. It's good for the nervous system, good for the gut, good for overall arterial dilation, allowing for blood flow, overall improvement with the hormones. Make sure you optimize those omega-3s, either with supplemental omega-3 support or eating your the fish that I talked about before, which are the only ones that really move the needle in terms of omega-3s. And that's wild salmon. That is trout, that's mackerel, anchovies, and sardines. Those are the needle movers. All right, next one is this. I talked about blue light at night, not good. But blue light in the morning, crucial. Make sure that you get out there and that you get some sunlight first thing in the morning. Now, let's say it's winter, like it is in New England when it gets cold here. The issue we have is that it's dark until like 8 a.m. And you're trying to get going at 5.36 and you don't, have, you don't want to get out of bed. I've talked about this before, but a light box. A light box is a great way to fight seasonal affective disorder. They give you a boost of energy first thing in the morning. Started using this about 19 years old. Lifesaver. Great, great thing to add into your repertoire. Okay. A few things that I really like. Giving your body a good stretch. We talk about exercise a lot, but what about stretching your hamstrings? What about stretching your hip flexors? How about just grabbing onto a chin-up bar, not even doing chin-ups, but just letting your body hang? These are excellent ways to improve oxygen flow in your body and lengthen and extend the muscle tissue as well as the fascia to a normal length which has less than aches and pains and holds and tightness on your body. It is a great way to begin to start to nourish more of those cells with more oxygen and more circulation throughout the body. Big, big fan of that. Okay, another one, if possible, do not overeat at any one meal. And I'm going to give you the other one right in line with this. And do not graze all day long. Every time you eat, it takes energy. If you overeat, it takes an enormous amount of energy for your digestive system to break down food. It's been well-researched that all of your energy for the day, but well, I should say 30% of your energy for the day goes towards digestion. It's why people feel better a lot of times when they're fasting. But remember, that's not the only reason or the whole reason to do it. But it can give you more energy. It can also be done too much though, and I've talked about that. But what we want to do is eat, stop for a period of time, allow blood sugar levels to drop back down to normal, allow all the food to empty from our stomach, and then we can eat again. Allow it to happen, and again, check out my podcast on why three meals per day. Okay, really, really important. And I want to give you one more today because I know that we're coming to our time. But we'll be back tomorrow 
So the last one today is this. This is one of my favorites. One of my favorite. The two words that I always go back to, and I can see it in people. I can see it when people are upset. I can see it when people are angry and they're irritable. And they have no energy and they're unhappy and they have a low mood and all of those different things is they lack perspective and they lack gratitude. Now, don't get me wrong. I fall into that category as well sometimes. But every time, like, oh, I'm really losing perspective here. Meaning like, yeah, this is not going well so right now, whatever the thing might be. But overall, life is still great. Look at all the blessings that I have versus it could be 10x worse. And the gratitude is this. The gratitude is don't wait for things to go wrong to start to be grateful for what you do have. Every day, I'm grateful that I get to wake up in this beautiful home or out of this nice bed or I get to eat this great meal or sip on this beautiful smoothie, whatever it might be. Give gratitude for all the small things that you have and then you will begin to see them multiply. But we know for sure that our psychology absolutely affects our physiology. If you are low mood in the brain and in the mind and in our thoughts, your body and nervous system will reflect that. Your brain tells your nervous system, we're down, we're unhappy. What do you think your body's going to feel like? There is absolutely a connection between the mind and the body. There's also a connection between the mind and the gut. Your digestion is typically so much worse when there's no energy, when there's no vitality. When you're stressed, all of these things zap your body's energy, which also affects the digestive system. Super important to look at. And I know that we're going to be touching on this more in the future, scientifically based research, as well as what we've been taught thousands of years through all of these amazing forms of Ayurvedic medicine and others out there. Hopefully today's podcast was helpful. I invite you to at least bring in two or three new of these new modalities into your life and start to add more and more. And as you do, do it with a little bit of perspective and a little bit of gratitude that every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Take care, everyone. Hope you have an amazing day. And as always, if this podcast was helpful, please do feel free to pass this information along to anyone else it may serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.